fact is that you know we've seen on and like it's something that we're gonna see more and more of there's literally more single-use masks in the midst of covid in the mediterranean than there's pla- uh, fish already and um yeah and and that's not stopping there like 2050 is a big number that people you know environmentalists that you hear from there's going to be more plastics in the ocean than fish and that number were very very quickly um yeah th- that could be in the next 10 years so we need to really really change this addiction that we have Welcome to another episode of the Seven Stones podcast. Today we have with us a guest as part of our ongoing series, Humans of Bali, a series where we dive into deep conversations with diverse individuals and topics that form Bali's authenticity. Sitting with me in the studio today is Gary Bench Gibb, an incredible human being who you might know better as the guy who, alongside his brother, rode down the most polluted river in the world to raise awareness on plastic pollution. Gary has a history of working in media production, nonprofit organizations, and of course, tackling the trash problem in and around Indonesia. He continues to not only raise awareness about these issues, but actually do the work himself, getting down and dirty in the river. I think at this point, I'm just repeating all the greatly written articles mentioned about Gary. So before I get carried away, I'm going to say welcome, hello, and how are you? Hey, thank you so much, Tia, for having me on this very podcast. Thank you so much for coming here. <laughs> Big honor. Uh, I don't do a lot of podcasts. This is definitely uh, uh, awesome to be a part of this I'm Humans super of Bali excited. series. Super excited. Thank you so much for coming. Um, for the audience out there listening to us, why don't you tell us a little bit background about yourself and who you are? Yes, for sure. So um, my name is Gary, as Tia mentioned. Um, Born in Paris, but grew up in Bali. Moved here when I was eight years old. And Bali has ever since been my home. I consider myself more Balinese than I do French, (laughs) although that French accent has has (laughs) stuck 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 with you. (laughs) But um, yeah, so growing up on Bali, you know, um, seeing the degradation of the beaches here, um, you know, when I remember at eight years old, the most pristine beaches possible. And then, you know, year by year with the rainy season, you would see the effects of plastic pollution it was literally everywhere you you went you know like it would be on the beaches and the rivers on the rice fields and then very very quickly i think with my brother and sister um i was 14 um and we decided that like we were going to make a change but you know not knowing exactly (laughs) what that was going to be um as the youth of the island one one of the things that, that that's easy to do for for young people is to go out and and clean up. So we went out and set out a series of beach cleanups, mm-hmm. thinking that we were gonna clean up Bali. <laughs> <laughs> so every weekend we pick a dif- different beach, um, only to realize that that very beach was polluted again. Uh. Um, but that really is what inspired us to start Make a Change World, which is my full time job mm-hmm. as an environmental activist and filmmaker. That's so cool. So you have a brother and a sister. Correct. So yes. sister Kelly, uh-huh. uh, she's two years older. She's, she's the eldest. I'm in the middle, middle, middle kid. <laughs> and then Sam, uh, the younger brother. So I'm very lucky every day to be working with my sister and brother. Oh, nice. Um, Keep so it in the full, family. <laughs> full full family, family affair. Yeah. And you grew up in Bali. Correct. Yes. Um, since you were eight, what, which school did you go to? I went to the International School uh, of Bali, uh, which is the Bali International School oh, in this, Sanor, yeah. uh, now nice. called, I think, the Island School. They changed their name. Yeah. But, yeah um, <laughs> it was still the International School when I, when okay. I went there. What, what was that like to grow up in Bali as an international student, but then feel more Balinese? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I mean, like, you know, like every afternoon finishing up school at like 2.45, having the afternoon to spend in nature, mm-hmm. you know, whether that was be surfing or running on the beach or just being fully immersed in this beautiful island. Yeah. Um, and then very quickly, yeah, background in music, always been a, a very oh, big really? musician. Yeah. What so would you play? I would, but like growing up in Bali, I would like, I would join gamelan ensembles and oh. that would be like, you know, purely. <laughs> that must have been so much fun. Bali's heart going into the culture. So. And that's like super, you know, each part has its own thing and you have to be really connected, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so that <laughs> I mean, very been... <laughs> interlocking rhythms. I mean, from the cat track dancing mm. and all mm. that beautiful, um, yeah, just <laughs> music there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, originally more of a pianist and guitar player. Oh, 
um, oh, so cool. but that has extended I also produced music uh, mm-hmm. with Balinese music embedded in it oh wow that's yes, cool like, yeah. so you, you implement Balinese stuff in a lot of the s- things you do yeah, yeah. I, think, uh, I think at the core um, I remember the, the like the first day I've ever landed on Bali and it was like literally an eye opening journey <laughs> stepping into this other world as a little eight year old having traveled <laughs> from Paris a long long flight mm-hmm. and then I just really immersed um, ever since in this beautiful culture mm-hmm.